So in the last video, I introduced what a storyboard was. And just to recap, a storyboard is a way that we can design our UI in a graphical way. And remember that a storyboard can have multiple view controllers or multiple screens defined inside of it. And one of the benefits of that is that you can then also graphically define your navigation, which we'll see in the future. However, I want to introduce you to another concept called auto layout. Now, auto layout is Apple's system for managing sizing and positioning of child elements, or basically the entire UI. And as you can see, if you select the storyboard anywhere and go to the properties pane, it actually says use auto layout. That's the default option. Now, a part of auto layout is a concept called constraints. And constraints are used specifically to size and position views on the screen. Let me explain by showing an example. Let's say we were trying to build a login screen, right? A very basic login screen. So this is really going to consist of two text boxes and a button. You could add some labels, but I'm keeping it simple here. So for example, if I take out a text field, right? Drop it there. Let's stretch it out to the full length of the screen. I'll copy and paste that. So I have two of them. And then I'll also take a button, drag it out, just like that. And I'll, I'll just change the text of this button to be login, right? Let me change some of this as well. I'll delete that. And I'll put some placeholder text. I'll say username. And I'll delete the text there. And I'll set the placeholder text to password. Okay, so basic UI. Now, the problem with this by default, you can actually see right away in the UI. I'll show you two cases. If I switch my view as, let's say, to an iPhone, look what happens. The button is now completely off centered, and this is way too big. And, you know, the reason is very straightforward. When we defined these controls, we set the frame property. So by moving them around, we're setting the frame. So if I go to the frame, you can see I'm setting a width and a height. Since my width is 560, no matter what form factor I'm on, the width is going to be 560, which is too big. This is with the generic. So the way that we can solve this is we can use constraints. Constraints are used to define the frame sort of at like runtime. And to implement constraints in the storyboard, it's actually very straightforward. All you do is you select your control. So if you see circles on your control for resizing, that's your in frame mode. If I click it again, you can see it now gives me all these different handles and this is now constraint mode. So here's the idea. With constraint mode, there are different types of constraints. So you can see these are width and height constraints. We have constraints for the edges, and we also have alignment constraints, which are in the middle. We'll get to these in the future. Don't worry too much. But let me just show you how they work. So in our example here, we want the username and password to always be this far from each edge. So how many units that is, we want it to be a constant. So if this shrinks, the size between the, the end of the text box and the edge of the screen should always be constant. If we create a constraint that says these edges have to be constant, that means if it grows or shrinks, the text box will adjust its size to make sure those constraints are always satisfied. So let's try to start adding some constraints. So for our username, let's go ahead and double click it so you can see now we're in this editing constraint mode and we're going to drag the left handle to the edge of the screen. Now you can see in your layout, if you scroll down, you can see it shows the constraints. So it says the leading space to the super view, that is the, the root view, basically the entire size of the screen is zero. So it's going to be at the edge of the screen. Now you can see it shows this red dashed rectangle. And this is representing where the constraint system thinks the, the control is going to be at runtime. And because we haven't provided enough information yet, this is where it thinks it will be. Now let's do the right-hand side. So once again, we're saying the distance between this text box and the edge of the screen 
should be a constant value when we, when we apply that. That's what it's saying. Now, as you can see here, it makes the text box bigger. So the red dashed line, it says, I think because of the two constraints that I currently have, the text box will be this length. And that's correct. It's the same length as it's supposed to be. The, the, the last problem that we're facing is, well, it's too high. So we're going to use the top constraint to tell it where to go. And once I do that, I'm now saying, okay, the top constraint to the top edge of the screen is going to be a constant value as well. So no matter what form factor I'm on, this will always be in this position and in the correct size. So for example, if I now switch the device here, you can see the text box shrinks because I'm saying the distance between the leading and ending edges has to be constant. So if that's constant and it gets smaller, the only way to satisfy that is by making the text box smaller as well. All right, so let's just finish this off for the rest of our UI. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the password, constant on the left, constant on the right, and this time I'll say this should always be below the, the username text box at a constant value. I'll drop that there. Once again, it turns blue, so we're good, and I can switch it, looking good. And the last one is the button, constant on the left, constant on the right, and let's make it below that text box. So now my UI is pretty dynamic. I can pick any form factor device, whether it's an iPad, you can see it, it grows, whether it's an iPhone, a smaller iPhone, it looks good on every device. So let's just go ahead and run this on the iPhone 8 in the simulator just to verify that everything looks good still. So here we are. The simulator is running and you can see on an iPhone 8, it looks good. So we built our UI using a generic view, but since we're using auto layout and constraints, we can make that apply to all different form factors because a constraint is really just a mathematical formula that gets executed at runtime.